Hello and welcome to this talk on intelligent agricultural management for soil carbon sequestration via reinforcement learning. I am Nero Hovakinian, Professor of Mechanical Science and Engineering at University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. This work is a collaboration between uh, Professor Nico Martin from Crop Sciences, Professor Zara Kalantari from ETH, and we have postdoctoral fellows, Per Jao, Guillermo Masilo, who is now at Texas A&M, and Carla Ferreira from KTH. We also have PhD students joining us, Jim Wu and Ron Town. So the global uh, warming is no more a prediction, it's already happening. To adequately feed more than 9 billion people by 2050, the world must close a gap of 70% between the amount of food produced today and that what you would need by mid-century. The data is collected from the paper provided here at the footnote. So it's well known that soil carbon sequestration can have tremendous impact on climate change and food security. The global soil carbon pool of 2,500 gigatons is 3.3 times the size of the atmospheric pool which is 760 gigatons. Soil carbon sequestration has the potential to offset 5 to 15% of the global fossil fuel emission. Cropland soil has the highest soil se sea sequestration potential among all types of soil. 157 million hectares of US cropland have the capacity to sequester 46 to 98 terograms of carbon per year. Conversion of natural to agricultural ecosystems causes depletion of the soil organic carbon pool by as much as 60 to 75 percent. An increase of one ton of soil carbon pool of degraded cropland soil may increase crop yield by 20 to 40 kilograms per hectare per wheat, 10 to 20 kilogram hectare per May, and half to one kilogram hectare per cow piece. This data is collected from the papers mentioned here in the footnote. Uh, there are many management practices influencing soil stored carbon. For example, conservation tillage, cover crops, fertilization, mixed farming, irrigation. It is challenging to find the optimal management practices, maximizing the soil, soil carbon sequestration while improving the crop productivity. Agricultural management is essentially a decision-making problem, sequential decision-making problem. A few decisions, when and how much to fertilize, need to be made sequentially across the period. Reinforcement learning has achieved superhuman or remarkable performance on various sequential decision-making tasks, like in board games, video games, and robotic control. Here is the alpha goal that everybody is well aware of it, right? Here it's OpenAI 5, and here is learning dexterity, OpenAI 5 simulation environment. Uh, reinforcement learning has great potential for agriculture management to optimize stored carbon and crop yield. Overview of the proposed framework for agricultural management can be given like this. Imagine we have a simulator that can help us to simulate millions of interactions between the soil and the reinforcement learning agent during the training of the management policy. So we'll have the crop simulators to simulate the crop and soil conditions under the given practice, and we'll apply the deep reinforcement learning algorithm, like DeepQ Network Soft Actor Critic, to learn the management policies. When deploying a trained management policy in the real world, so we'll have the real sensors measuring the moisture, organic matter, and other soil conditions, and will apply the management practices recommended already by the simulator, okay? So the technical approach uh, involves the following steps. So training a management policy using deep reinforcement learning may need millions of interactions between the reinforcement learning agent and the cropping system in feasible per field experiments. We let the agent interact with the cropping system simulated by AppSim or DSAT, which are the two most recognized crop simulators. DSAT will be initially used for algorithm validation and existing development 
allows for it to be directly used for RS training. APSI will be used for validating the effectiveness of the proposed framework on Illinois and Central Portugal farm skills. So APSI stands for Agricultural Production System Simulator. This set stands for Decision Support System for Agrotechnology Transfer. Both are very prominent. The technical approach involves formulation of a market decision process. So we need to understand what are the states and what are the action variables. The states are crop status, weather conditions, soil conditions. The actions are fertilization, irrigation, residual retention, and cover crops tillage, for example. We need to choose a reward function because we're optimizing against it. The reward function is a combination of stored carbon yield, leached nitrogen and management cost in case of nitrogen management, for example. The Ws are the weights. Okay, so we know that you apply fertilizer, some of it will be leached. It's important to include it in the reward function. The technical approach. We adopt state-of-the-art deep learning algorithm, deep Q network and soft actor critic to train the management policies. So how does it happen? We have the simulator that produces the tuples where S is the state, A is the action, R is the reward, S prime is the next state. They, they are collected into a replay buffer that produces samples of tuples. The optimizer will give us the optimal network parameters that are implemented later in the RL ledger. The loss function for the deep Q network would be the following here in our training, where we apply domain randomization following the reference 14 given here by randomizing weather during the training to improve the robustness of the train policies against uncertain weather conditions. Here are some preliminary results for nitrogen management. Optimizing nitrogen management with deep reinforcement learning and crop simulations. So we started from Two examples, corn in Iowa and Florida. We simplify the reward function to have the following form, a yield, a leached nitrogen and the input. So is the management cost associated with the fertilizers? Okay, because when you apply fertilizer, there is management cost with it. So the parameters we choose to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. The discrete action space, we pick for five possible actions for each day. 0, 40, 80, 120, 160 kilogram hectare of nitrogen fertilizer. Irrigation is set to zero. The state space is 35 state output by this set. It includes soil conditions, flood conditions, plant growth stage, weather, and date. Uh, the reinforcement learning algorithm used is the deep Q network. Q function is approximated by a neural network of one hidden layer with 256 nodes. Hyperparameter setup, uh, is chosen to have the discount factor of 0 0.99 and the learning rate is uh, 10 to the power minus 05. So the Iowa case, we take corn location and Iowa year of weather 1999, for example, the policy we see that converges in 1300 episodes, final cumulative reward, which is 2115 as we see it here. Now we compare that policy with the baseline approach that we've taken from a paper, which is done based on common sense of uh, farmer's experience. We apply all the nitrogen fertilizers when the corn plant reaches the stage of five expanded leaves. Applying fertilizers following the trade policy leads to better cumulative reward than the baseline approach. Compared with baseline one, the trade policy leads to more yield and roughly the same end leaching with the same amount of fertilizers, if you check these numbers. From an economic perspective, we would like to make the decision once a few days instead of every day. With the trained policy, we evaluate its performance under reduced action frequencies, act every seven days and act every 10 days. And here we see that under different action frequencies, the policy will adjust the date and amount for nitrogen application similar cumulative reward is achieved. Crop corn here is the case of Florida, Gainesville, year of weather 1982. Irrigation is set to zero to emulate extreme drought and limited water supply scenarios. Policy converges within 1200 episodes. 
final cumulative reward per episode, which is 600, as you see here. The baseline approach from this paper applies all the nitrogen fertilizers when the corn plant reaches the stage of five expanded leaves. The so applying fertilizers following the train policy leads to better cumulative reward, more yield and less nitrate leaching with fewer fertilizers. If you look the numbers. Performance of the train policy under reduced action frequencies is simulated also here. If we act every seven days and every 10 days, so we see that under reduced action frequencies, the policy will adjust the dating amount for nitrogen application. Under the action frequency of 10 days, the cumulative reward is slightly smaller than that of acting every day. However, it is still larger than the baseline approach. We see it here from the table for cumulative reward. So in summary, we have an agricultural management framework for optimizing soil carbon sequestration and crop yield based on reinforcement learning and crop simulations. We apply the proposed framework to optimize nitrogen management with preliminary results obtained for corn in Florida and Iowa. The future work will involve development of a crop simulation environment for reinforcement learning training based on APSI, which has been well calibrated for the US corn belt region. Train and evaluate management policies for soil carbon sequestration using the absin based simulation environment. Evaluate and improve the performance of trained policies under partial observability when some states are not available. Bridge the sim to real gap by leveraging real world data to calibrate the crop simulation model. So that's all. I want to acknowledge again my team who has worked collaboratively with us on this proposal. Uh, that is funded by C3AI Digital Transformation Institute. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.